Hello everyone, this is Logan, and it's a shame when any controller breaks on you, even if it is the infamous DualShock 3 controller. Well, technically it didn't break on me, I got the PlayStation 3 with this broken controller and the guy gave me 20 bucks off it, but no matter, because I spent that $20 and bought this. This is the Power A controller. Uh, not really sure who made it. Presumably Power A, actually, because it does mention PowerA.com. But, what is this? This is a PS3 DualShock controller that has slipped into the Xbox 360 controller's clothing. Because it has the button layout very similar to the uh, PlayStation 3's. As you can see, the select... The select, start, and home buttons there. Select, start, and home buttons there. And it also has the buttons, which are, well, actually, sort of like both of them, except, well, they aren't multicolored like the 360, and the uh, logos aren't as uh, seeable, if that's a word, as the uh, DualShock. So, you know, it doesn't matter. You can... Just as you, I think you, most people probably know that this is X and this is circle and this is triangle and this is square. And why I say this is a lot like the uh, 360 controller is because it has a concave thumbstick. Much like the Xbox 360, not much like the PS3's convex controller, the convex thumbstick of the uh, PlayStation 3. Which, you know, a lot of people don't like, so they kind of, a lot of people just run out and buy this one. And there's also a D-pad that is not completely broken up. Much like the 360, again, but not like the PlayStation 3's D-pad. And, of course, it is also corded, much like none of them. And the buttons glow, again, like none of them. So, let's power it on. Unfortunately, I can't power it on from the controller because it is wired, not wireless. Alright, so the uh, PS3 is powered on and uh, of course the controller powers on automatically being as it is wired. And as you can see, quite responsive. Um, you know, responsive as a typical DualShock or 360 controller. And you know, you can uh, go into certain it, you can go into the uh, settings, and the buttons are all very, uh, you know, it's very uh, nice controller. Now, that might sound fine and dandy, however, there are a few drawbacks. Minor drawbacks, yes, but still drawbacks nonetheless. The first is that, if you can see here, it has this sort of uh, spiky material. Uh, yeah, you can see it now. It has this sort of spiky material around the uh, edges. Now, I guess in theory this is supposed to sort of make it grip a bit easier, but in the long run it just makes the grip a bit worse, in my opinion. It just makes it a bit more painful to grip it. And another thing, oh and uh, by the way, the, uh, as you can see, the buttons do light up. There's the home button, and, um, you can't see this on camera, but the face buttons are also lighting up as well. But, you know, the spikiness I can is, uh, also, you know, not a big flaw. And another minor flaw is the L2 and R2 buttons, the triggers, are not as good as the 360 or the DualShock. As you can see, or as you might be able to hear, there's more of a press to the uh, standard DualShock. But overall, it really isn't that bad a controller. And another thing I forgot to really mention is, it is a lot bigger. So, you know, if you have a uh, larger hands like I do, you'll grip this a lot easier. So, you know, uh, kudos to that. 
and of course you can turn it off just like a typical dual shock and all that and it works really really well so in the long run very good controller highly recommend it